Welcome to the BizOps Manifesto Power Panel, talking about embracing agility across the business. I'm Lisa Martin. I have three guests here with me today to break down this topic. Pierre Filyun, CTO and Global Head of Enterprise Technology and Governance at HCL Enterprise Studio. Hey, Pierre, welcome. Dave West is also here, the CEO of scrum.org. Hey, Dave, good to have you with us. Hi, hi Lisa. Hi, everybody. And Serge Lucio is here as well, the general manager of Broadcom's enterprise software division. Hey, Serge, good to have you on the program. Thank you. Good to be here. So we're going to be talking about the people and the process and technology requirements that businesses need to adopt to be able to embrace agility across the business. We're going to also be talking a lot about this inaugural BizOps industry research survey on the state of digital business. A lot of very interesting findings that we're going to go through the next 20 minutes or so. So the first question guys is the BizOps survey found is over 519 individuals over five countries, business and technology executives. This survey found most of organizations still expect this year to be as challenging as last year. I want you to kind of walk us through why that is and how is that going to impact digital transformation initiatives. Pierre, we'll start with you, then Dave, then Serge. Sure, no, thank you, Lisa. So uh, I think these days disruption is no longer an exception. It's kind of become the norm or the rule in terms of how we operate. And as uh, executives in companies have learned, you know, over the last year with everything that's happened is that you can only modernize to a point and then you need to do a little bit more. And what really is needed is for us to understand going forward, how we're actually going to remodel our business by harnessing the resources that we have in a much more agile way, in a more fluent way from an organizational perspective. And I think our current, you know, midterm goals probably is that we're capable of remodeling how we can remove roadblocks, these kind of roadblocks in the future and get us in a better position where we are. I don't expect things to change dramatically over the next year, more in line with us making sure that we're more future-proof in the way in which we're working. Working. We still have remote workers, global uncertainty, the vaccine. Dave, what are your thoughts on the impact of this year on trans digital transformation initiatives? Yeah, it, it's funny. When I think of um, sort of uncertainty and chaos, I think that uh, that COVID really started it rolling down a hill. But unfortunately, it's literally like rolling down a hill, this chaos and complexity. It's getting faster and faster and harder and harder. You know, we're talking about the new norm, right? What is the new normal? We just don't know. And I think the reality is that most organizations were surprised by the impact of COVID-19. And because of that, they responded very quickly. Many of them, you know, people were working at home, changing, looking at their supply chain, looking at localization, you know, all sorts of really important things happened, but very quickly, not very strategically. I think the next few years, we're going to see hopefully some of that realizing into strategy and being, you know, and actually starting to fundamentally change how the businesses look at the world. We've sort of entered the digital age, Lisa, you know, this next age of innovation. We're moved out of mass production and the age of oil into something very, very different. And I think those organizations, every organization out there is going to have to get a handle on that. And COVID was the wake up, right? And uh, I think the next five years are going to be very interesting. I, I agree with you that that accelerant was, I didn't think of it before as a big ball rolling downhill. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out of my head. But Serge, <laughs> talk to us about your thoughts, the impacts to digital transformation initiatives. Yeah, I think back to what Dave was, was describing, right? So the, the big challenge is the uncertainty. Um, many, many organizations are faced with uh, kind of a lot of unknowns about if and when things will, will go back to quote unquote some kind of normality. And, and, and with that kind of uncertainty, um, it, there's a lot of challenge in terms of planning from an investment point of view context. So Dave was talking about kind of uh, short term versus long term, but a lot of these organizations are basically focused on just uh, getting by over the next 12 months and, and trying to figure out what needs to happen over the next 12 months. At the same time, there's a lot of uh, challenges with respect to you know, revenue and certainty. And so in, in that context, you have kind of this tension between how much do I invest short term on basically tactical initiatives? How do I feel about teams? How do I enable these teams to deliver in weeks as opposed to months? And then at the same time, how do I start to, how do I continue to invest? 
to fundamentally change kind of my operating model. And, and that, that tension is very real between uh, many of the organizations we serve. One of the things that the survey found was that most of the respondents were very willing to embrace being more agile in order to be able to better respond to rapidly changing market conditions. But I wanna get your opinion on what that actually really means, that willingness to embrace being agile. What does it really mean? And what do organiz organizations have to do differently? Pierre, we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. So I think we had a discussion a while back and, and Dave actually coined something interesting where he said, you know, People without, you know, quoting a famous you know, sneaker brand, just go out and do it. I think that's probably the most important part of this. I mean, most organizations are struggling to figure out how should we embrace agile? Should we jump in at full scale? Now? Should we be looking scrum? Should we be doing scrum fall? Should we be falling over our own feet? Nobody knows exactly, you know, what might be the right fit. And I think the most important part is to pick a, a pair of solid principles that you're going to embrace start executing on them, start learning as you go, and basically improve as you move forward. Uh, I mean, over the last year, we've embraced digital product management um, quite a lot on our side, and it's had a tremendous benefits without us per se aiming for those benefits at the end of the day. And these are things that you learn as you go. And if you're going to wait around, you know, analysis paralysis is going to be the killer of agile at the end of the day. Just do it. I like that good advice. Dave, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I think that what's really interesting is Agile has been around for 20 years. The manifesto was signed 20 years ago. Scrum came into the world 25 years ago. All of these sort of Agile approaches, but they were predominantly focused on technology. And I think that one thing that I've noticed over and over again is that the realization by C-level executives, level sevens or whatever they're called, um, they've realized that it's not about technology. <laughs> I mean, it's great that the technologists, I guess the technologists always worked in this complex world because customers never knew what they wanted. We didn't know how we we're going to do it. We'd never worked together before. We didn't know how much it was going to cost. So <laughs> because of that, we had to work in an agile way in technology. But ultimately, I think one of the big differences going forward is going to be that, um, dare I say, that intersection of business and technology, that business ops kind of model that we that we talked about in the, in the manifesto and what the survey was really trying to tease out i think that's really really going to be interesting and i don't know what that actually means in terms of the execution i hope it means that we're going to see teams better aligned to business outcomes I hope it's going i hope it means that we're going to actually allow those teams that are actually know what they're approaching to make decisions. I hope it means that planning is going to be more directional rather than, you know, task level. I hope it means that we're going to start measuring the success in terms of business outcomes, not in terms of the work that we do. I, I hope it means all of these things, but we will wait and see because experience would indicate that after a big disaster, lots of people tend to go back to exactly how they worked before, you know, with that sort of emu kind of mentality or ostrich or whatever thing sticks its head in the ground. I don't, I don't know. Well, sometimes we just, we would just want to go back to when things were safe and normal, but in terms of kind of following on Dave, to what you said, 94% in the survey, 94% of respondents said, we should adopt BizOps to increase competitiveness. So that willingness is there in a vast majority of the respondents. But so I'd like to get your thoughts on what that willingness actually means and what they need to do differently. Yeah, so the, the problem is that I think everybody understands that uh, you have to be agile, right? You need to be able to respond quickly to, uh, to your customer needs. You need to put the customer at the center of everything you do, right? So conceptually, I think everybody understands that. The, the problem is really the operating model that many of these large organizations are, are dealing with to this day, right? So you have these kind of vertically kind of organized kind of organization, you know, with, uh, with functional roles, specialized roles. And when you think about kind of agility, uh, well, one of the big challenges is that you, you need to start to think horizontally, right? You need to start to think about kind of value streams and what are the cross-functional teams that need to be organized um, and, and integrated to deliver on specific business outcomes? You need to start shifting from the traditional contract-based model that these teams have historically uh, to a model which is much more based on trust, right? And you need to move away from kind of vanity, vanity metrics and KPIs that many of the organizations 
typically lead by, uh, to really focus on one thing and one thing only, which is kind of the business value that's being delivered. So fundamentally, I think it, it, it requires a bit of a, a redesign of the operating model within these organizations. And, and one where, um, you know, especially when you have risk adverse um, kind of organizations, you need to start to be more accepting of risk uh, fundamentally. More accepting of risk. You brought something up there, sir, that I want to tackle in the next question with respect to culture. But one of the things that the survey uncovered was an interesting kind of seeming contradiction. Uh, the majority of respondents said, we agree digital transformation is about business outcomes more than it is about technology. But 62% said we're still adopting technology for technology's sake. What does that actually mean? And what's the kind of cultural impact there for organizations to really get that more uh, aligned on di the digital transformation and the technology and the business outcomes? So, uh, uh, Pierre, we'll start with you. Sure. So I think there were a number of reports this year, you know, talking about what's happened, what's not happened. And the majority of them focus on the fact that, you know, as tech leaders, for years we've been, you know, praying to the gods to get budget approval to do all kinds of modernization activities to our infrastructure, our IT, you know, tools, et cetera. And, you know, lo and behold, the bowl comes rolling down the hill, um, smashes a few things, and we basically get some blank checks. So we run around and we buy a whole bunch of stuff to modernize and to, you know, embrace this ability to do things differently. And in that whole process, what we basically did was buy more tools and buy more technology. And in that whole process, we didn't really embrace what it is that we we're trying to achieve. So basically aligning the technology to the actual business requirements, getting closer to the customer, being able to understand where our market's moving, how we're capable of you know, reducing the, the journey, if I can put it that way, and make sure that we're more aligned to, to where we need to be. So you know, although a lot of CIOs and CTOs got away with doing a lot of great stuff over the last year, and you know, users like me are like, woohoo, I don't have to worry about stupid VPNs and things anymore. You know, that all went away. But in the same instance, I didn't really get anything that changed the organizational dynamic, um, which is a challenge. We still have the fundamental problems we have because the business leaders are not yet embracing the deep knowledge of the processes that are supported by the technology and then driving that in such a way that we can gain more business value, which is important, you know, to Serge's previous point. You know, we're doing all these great things, but we're not focusing on the incremental value that we're supposed to be, you know, getting. Dave, did it surprise you that there was this seemingly contradictory response Yes, it's more about biz outcomes than technology, but we're still adopting technology for technology's sake. What are your thoughts on that? And how can organizations actually start to move the needle on that? You can't buy cultural change, right? But you do know that your board and your leadership want you to do something. And the easiest thing you can do is buy something. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a sort of now an American. So that's kind of my mantra in life, right? When in doubt, go shopping. And, uh, and which is fantastic, just, just for the record. <laughs> but so the, you, you've got to be seen to be doing something, whether it's replacing a VPN, um, which is always a fun thing to do, or whether it's getting on Slack. Everybody's going to be on Slack. That's going to help. But actually, the, the core is that exactly what Serge and Pierre have been saying all along. It's that, OK, so what is our business all about? Where is our, what are our customers? What do they actually need? What do our employees need? How do we build a better value stream from customer to, to, um, to the organization? How do we align our teams to that? How do we incentivize correctly the, both the employees that are working and our partners that are providing things in this supply chain? How do we do all of those things? I mean, ultimately, though, that means that we have to take a step back, which is a very frustrating thing at the moment, and actually look at what is our business all about? What is the mission of it? Who are the customers? Take a moment to find what those are. And then as soon as we have that, and we don't have to do it, as, as Pierre said, we don't have to do it completely. We can do it incrementally. Organizations are very inward looking. That is the industrial mindset. That is that paradigm. It's looking as Serge talked about silos, optimizing my department, optimizing my budget, optimizing my, my kingdom. And what we're talking about is something that cross cuts all of that. 
So the decision making is going to change around where the investments go, and 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 that's that's going to be really really challenging. So I'm not surprised. I'm not at all surprised that everybody says we should be doing this, and it's like classic, you know. I mean, everybody says we need to be fitter, but we're still all not fit. You know, it's sort of that's just the reality of the world that we live in, right? But we have to start making a stand, and the place we begin is customers. That's the place, and and as soon as we start doing that, then everything else just becomes quite easy, actually. I like that. Focus on customers, and it becomes easy. Sorry, John, I'm kidding. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think they they summarize it well, right? It's it's, it's very easy to just uh, buy a tool or, or buy something, right? Uh, fundamentally, changing kind of an operating model is very difficult. Right. You, you need to fundamentally rethink, for instance, all the fund initiatives. So something as mundane as, you know, all the, you know, as a leader, right, in my organization, I have a budget, right? What's my incentive of, uh, of collaborating with my peers in, in, in terms of delivering kind of an outcome? And, um, and so that, that to me is kind of a fundamental shift that we need to operate. And that's probably one of the reasons why many of the uh, our, our largest organizations that we're serving are, are starting to introduce kind of new roles, like a chief digital officer. That's kind of a way to, to kind of bring kind of a, a slightly different organizational design. Uh, the challenge though is that, well, all of these teams are still kind of integrated with the fabric of these large kind of systems, which, you know, exist. So when we look at kind of uh, these value streams, in fact, they're they're not kind of independent from one another. You have a bunch of interdependencies. You are looking at kind of networks of these value streams. Um, but the 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 fundamental shift that we need to see is is really for these organizations to think about ultimately what part of the products or services that uh, need to be focused on. How these become kind of a, the primary things that we measure from a KPI point of view, and how do we align teams and projects and funding uh, along these kind of outcomes? So being customer focused, also being more broadly focused, you mentioned the chief digital officer role, which is an interesting role. One that looks is supposed to look more holistically, uh, internally and externally. And we know that, that these organizations know we need to be better at this, like Dave's joke about, we know we need to be more fit, but what's it going to take to actually create that collaboration so that IT and business leaders are really working in lockstep and doing so in a, in a timely fashion so that they're able to stay competitive. And I, I do want to know from each of you, are you seeing examples of this already in progress? Pierre, let's start with you. Yeah, so I mean, I, I can only give an inward example and say, you know, one of the interesting things that we did was we, we tried to embrace the delivery of services at HL in kind of a different frame this year and kind of productize the services that we deliver. Now, if, if you're most people, you're trying to think about how do I set up you know, things like communities of practice and collaboration between people so that they can work together on developing new services, new features, new products, et cetera. And we set out with, you know, creating this agile way of way of working. What we didn't anticipate, which, which was a, a very nice side effect is that because of COVID, because of the catalyst that it provided us, the remote working people, sense of ownership is inherently there meaning that self-organization of teams started happening. Nobody needed to crack a whip to get a bunch of guys to talk together with one another to figure out how to get stuff done. It's not like you can walk over to the water cooler and have a chat to Bob. You know, Bob is a thousand miles away or Bob is sitting in another state. So all of a sudden the whole dynamic changed. And I have to say, you know, people are a lot more resilient than what they're being given credit for. And if as organizations, we embrace the culture in such a way and harness it in a positive way, we can actually get this movement to happen. And we actually can make the sum of the parts to be more than the whole. And this year we've seen that happen. Um, and by no means are we done. We still have a lot of work to do, like Serge said, you know, yeah, we have budgets, you know, and budgets give you finite amount of movement left or right. And you have to do what's best and, and possible within the frame that you're given. But I, I think, you know, embracing the cultural change and helping people to really excel at that and empowering them makes a huge difference in the way that you can get stuff done. Absolutely. Dave, what are your thoughts on this? I, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial, I think. I'm not a big fan of chief digital officers. 
I'm not, it just seems like, well, we've got a problem. It's like, you know, and, and some would argue that, well, if you've got a problem with something, you should get a coach and all this stuff and you get it sorted. And that's probably a good thing. But most digital officers, their entire, they're going to build a long-term career in that and, and create yet another stovepipe. And that stovepipe's responsible for bringing all the other stovepipes together. It sounds a bit odd. If a digital officer is really there to, as a short-term enabler, because you asked, you asked me, you asked IT and business leaders, you know, trying to get them to work together better. The best business leaders know about IT, right? The best business leaders are IT centric. You know, Elon Musk isn't, you know, or or Jeff Bezos are great business leaders, but they know about technology, right? That's what brings them together. Technology is an asset. And they may not be the most biggest expert in it, but they care deeply about learning about that stuff. So I think I think the next few years, we're going to see a lot of C-level and, and, and leaders in organizations become a lot more tech savvy and maybe hire coaches to help them navigate. And the mm-hmm. chief digital officer will become more of a coach rather than a a person that rolls out Slack or, or something, you know? <laughs> so uh, I think that is going to be... The next, the next big jump, really, when we realize that it's not, you don't get an additional thing. It's just part of what you do, you know? Serge, agree, disagree? No, I, I agree. I mean, the, the, the reality is that it, it is happening, right? I mean, the, the, don't get me wrong. We see that every day that uh, some initiatives are, are highly integrated. Uh, organizations and teams are measuring business value, business outcomes. The problem is that it's oftentimes a very small subset of what these organizations are, are, are doing. And so it's, it's almost like the CEO is coming as kind of these new kind of, uh, as Dave described, as kind of this new silent organization, which is really there to kind of scale uh, what has been working within these organizations. But, but we're kind of creating this kind of almost shadow organization as opposed to fundamentally rethinking uh, and redesigning the organization and redesigning kind of the operating model. Uh, and so we are kind of layering new stuff as opposed to fundamentally transforming. Uh, so as long as it is just a, kind of a, a, just a step towards kind of a true transformation, I think that's fine. The, the challenge is, is to, again, create kind of a, a new set of silos, which are now called value streams, as opposed to you know, functional silos that we have today. So a lot of opportunities identified in this survey, but there are still a lot of challenges there. So I'd love to get you guys And our final question here in this panel to help us understand from the BizOps Coalition's perspective, how are you helping organizations to navigate these challenges so that they can become successful, transform and actually become agile to respond to rapidly changing market conditions? Pierre, kick us off. Sure, so I mean, from a coalition perspective, you know, we're just trying to make sure that there's a set of sensible principles, you know, that people can can look at can adopt um, that you know I think Dave mentioned it in another discussion that give you that clarity of thought and mind you know in terms of what should you be be thinking how should you be thinking about it what are the the various aspects you need to consider and then from that perspective how does how do you implement these things in a sensible way for your organization you know by no means is this like here are the 10 steps you do them you know and you're done you know you'll be rich beyond your wildest dreams it's not how it works you know you're still gonna have to work at it you're still gonna have to figure some stuff out you're gonna have to deepen yourself in your organizational you know policies procedures understand how the organization's actually working i mean you can't strap a va to a to mini cooper and expect to break the land speed record without the wheels falling off you know or, or something going wrong so you really need to harness that in a more sensible manner you know to move forward and i think uh, the coalition is on the right path to help organizations realize you know what is a sensible way to go you know what are principles we can adopt that we can abide by that will help us, you know, drive business in a different way and close this chasm of disparity between, you know, business and IT. And Dave, your perspective on the BizOps Coalition helping organizations to sort through these challenges. Yeah, I've got to share a little bit of a personal story. So I, I must admit that I wasn't keen on the whole idea. And Serge sent me some stuff and he's like, could you just provide some feedback? And I did. And then there was a press release with my name on it. 
And that, so I was like, oh my God, I better get involved because I don't want to, you know, have my name associated with something that doesn't make sense. But I've actually been surprisingly, um, I've actually found it a lot more positive than I, I thought because of exactly what Pierre is saying. So basically the coalition is a, a group of vendors, a group of consultants, some pseudo thought leaders that think they are very thoughtful and maybe they're not people <laughs> like me. And what, what, we've, what we're doing though, is actually trying to get some clarity of terminology, get some clarity of what, what, what are the principles? What are those key principles? How do they relate to each other? Get some, some synergy to allow, because there's so much noise out there. And hopefully this is going to say, okay, this is what BizOps is. This is why it's important. These are some simple things. And then hopefully because of the breadth that, that, that Serge and others have managed to get in terms of, of membership, we're going to get all of those organizations to be consistently talking about these things, which will then create pressure on the market to actually start adopting these things in the, in the way that we're proposing or challenge those ideas and then make them better. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, surprisingly, because the last thing we need is yet another manifesto and, and group of people that spend their whole time talking about things and never getting anything done. But actually, I think there might be some valuable stuff that comes out of here. And we're going to inspect and adapt to make sure it is valuable. And if it isn't, we will stop. <laughs> and so just wrap us up with, with your thoughts on and extending that value. Yeah, I mean, look, we we, we started the, the BizOps Manifesto really with kind of a very simple observation. Everybody's talking about the same stuff, right? But you have a value stream management church, the digital product management church, the DevOps church, the Scrum church, the Safe church, right? But we're all saying the same thing. But we create so much confusion with our large enterprise customers by just not agreeing on a set of principles and just saying, like, look, fundamentally, we're all talking about the same thing. And there are, there are process aspects, there are cultural aspects, there is what do you measure, there's but but fundamentally, we agree on the same core set of principles. And so for me, uh, the BizOps Manifesto, first and foremost, is to get the stakeholders from these different communities together and recognize that at the end of the day, we share the same values and create some clarity to the market as to how these pieces fit to one another. The second aspect, which is more from our point of view as, a, as one of the vendors of tools, right? There's tons of tools out there. We talked a lot about kind of measuring business outcomes as a primary way um, to actually align everybody in our organization. Well, today, if you look at any of these organizations, on average, they use about 40 different tools on one of these value streams. None of that stuff integrates with one another. It's extremely difficult for an organization to be able to trace from an investment all the way to stuff that delivers value in production to a customer. And so one of my hopes through the coalition is that we start to actually provide a platform data models, ontologies to start to integrate those different tools to facilitate that kind of integration. So to, th those are kind of the two things which I think we can really help um, kind of develop and, and improve on. Well, we know that there's a tremendous amount of folks out there that are wanting to embrace agility across the business, identifying areas where they need to do work. So great advice from the three of you. Thank you so much for joining me on this power panel today and sharing what organizations can do to really embrace that agility across the organization. Thank you. Thank you. For Pierre Filioun, Dave West and Serge Lucio, I'm Lisa Martin. Thanks for watching.